Hi everyone, it's Michael Citron with the Parkland Power Real Estate Team at Remax Park Creek. It's that time of the week. It's Ask Michael Monday. It's our episode number 11, and I'm excited to have a guest speaker. This is our first guest speaker of the year. This is Joe Palapoli with Supreme Lending. And I wanted to invite Joe onto our show uh, just to give some insight on the mortgage market, how important it is to work with a local lender. And we were introduced to Joe probably about five years ago um, here at Remax Park Creek. He became the in-house lender and we just connected, um, very knowledgeable. It took us you know, over 10 years to find a really good lender that was accessible, that really looked out for our clients' best interests, and also was really a team player. I, I call him an extension of our team. He's been able to, to work with us and help with our business planning and goal planning, and, and you know, individually works on a regular basis with our team members. So our clients get great um, you know, knowledge of what to do when they're looking to shop for a home. There's so many extra things that, um, that you look for with a lender today. So we also wanted to, to discuss how you get a seamless process with, with Joe and his, and his team. And, you know, our business has grown significantly in the last few years. And, you know, we've done many buyer side transactions. We've referred Joe to do many refinances for our clients. And you know our success ratio has been extraordinary. Our clients have, have said that you know he's exceeded our expectations, and that's what we're looking for. So you know we want to have Joe as an extension of what we do with our business and how we work. And I want to offer that advice and support to our our clients and as well as other agents in the business and, um, that can work with lenders uh, like Joe in this business. So I appreciate you coming on, Joe. Um, first, first question, you know, I just wanted to have you introduce yourself, talk a little bit about uh, your family and your experience in the lending business. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me today. This is exciting. Uh, I grew up down here in South Florida, went to Coconut Creek High School. Uh, I've been a loan officer for the past 21 years, um, almost six of them with Supreme Lending. Uh, I live, live in Parkland. I've lived there for the last 17 and a half years. Um, my kids grew up, went to the Parkland schools. Um, it's uh, just an exciting area. Uh, it's uh, with Coconut Creek High School. I grew up in Margate. Lived here since 1969, so I really have a feel of the market in uh, this, you know, Coconut Creek, Margate, Curls Springs, Tamarack, Parkland area. Okay. And your your experience at Supreme? You tell me a little bit about Supreme Lending. Supreme Lending is a national lender, licensed in all 50 states. Uh, the biggest accomplishment that we've had is, you know, our our philosophy is close on time, fund on time. And from 2015 to 2016, we actually doubled in size, which we ranked as the 16th largest lender in the country at the end of 2016, which is really huge, really huge. And 2017, as the industry kind of shrunk about 20%, Supreme overall grew about 5%. So that's definitely going to catapult us into one of the top 10 lenders in the country. So that's exciting. It's interesting you say that because I get a lot of people that maybe not have heard of Supreme, and I always say they're, they're one of the top lenders in the country, so being 16 and possibly on pace to be in the top 10, um, that really helps. So people, a uh, misconception of not being a big, big uh, national lender, uh, you know, is, is something important for our clients to have that experience and that knowledge of knowing that, you know, not only getting a great local lender like yourself, uh, but also having a, um, you know, Supreme as your, your backing. So, you know, another thing is, is great is that, you know, we like to work with the best. So, you know, Joe's the, the number one, you know, Florida Supreme lender right now. And we're the top, you know, Remax Florida uh, real estate agent. So we love working with a, a lender that has the same motto and, you know, clients first and, you know, works, you know, crazy hours and is always accessible to our clients. Um, that's really the difference that, that we see, you know, after looking for 10 years, we finally found the lender um, where I'm looking at a property or team members looking at a property and Joe's able to get on the phone on a Saturday or a Sunday or Monday night at 10 o'clock sometimes to have a conference call with somebody to get ready to, you know, to purchase their largest financial asset. That's the difference I feel that we're getting from, from Joe and his team. Um, his wife's also a part of your team, Christina. Yeah. You know, we have, a, a, we have so many people helping us through our goals. It's almost you know, an extension of, of our whole team. And I think that's really the difference maker with with uh, working with Supreme and, and your team. Um, the uh, next question is, 
What are the two misconceptions when buying a home in today's market? I think a lot of buyers are on the fence. They're not sure how much money to put down. Do I need a lot of money? Um, what, what are the two misconceptions that you're seeing in the real estate market? Well, especially for first time home buyers. I mean, it's the amount of money to put down. Uh, the misconception is, do I need 20% to put down to buy a home? And the answer is no. Whether you're a first time home buyer or not, I mean, if you've owned multiple homes as a primary residence, you need 3%. You can get a conventional loan with as little as 3% down, which can be a gift from a family member or someone. And you can get a government loan, FHA loan, for as little as 3.5% down. Um, you know, and I hear that, I don't have the 20% down. So that's a huge misconception. Yeah, no, definitely. We work with a lot of clients that are not, they're not even sure. And I just tell them they need to speak to a lender to get that information. Um, because banks are looking to lend money right now. They're looking to lend money. And uh, it's great to, if you have a good job and you, you know, you're know you qualified, it's, it's, it's great to take, it av take advantage of these loan programs right now. Yeah. Um, I, I'd like to know why should um, a buyer today get pre-approved for a loan before shopping? You know, should they get approved uh, longer, you know, way of, you know, in the process, um, you know, months ahead? Uh, year ahead, I mean, what, what do you, what do you um, suggest to a, a person looking to buy a house? Is it too soon um, to get in the market when you're, you know, uh, right when you're buying a house or should you, should you plan ahead? It's, it's never too soon to get pre-approved. I mean, the biggest reason to get pre-approved is whether you're buying a house today, you know, come the end of the school year, over the summer in preparation of this new school year, the sooner you know your options, the better. And that's the biggest part of getting pre-approved, whether there's, uh, debt you need to pay down, debt you need to pay off, credit scores that you can get increased by paying down some debt. Um, the sooner you know what those options are, the better. So you could do it a year in advance. Um, it's, it's, it's just, why not do it now? It doesn't cost you a penny to do it. I always suggest that you should call early, even if you're um, early in the process, because if you have any credit issues or you have some issues that you might need to get fixed, Joe's a great coach. I mean, I, he saved a lot of clients, a lot of time and hassle by getting a, a pre-approved earlier. You provide all your, your documents because then that you can get really guided on what you should do or should do. <laughs> Sometimes you shouldn't do anything uh, before you you start looking for a property. And I always say you should feel comfortable with what you're spending. I, I always say, when you come to me, I wanna make sure you're approved. So I show you the right properties that you're comfortable spending. And with the, the lending business changing and so many different programs, you know, being 10,000, 20,000 away from being comfortable spending that little extra money um, or being tight on the budget I can show you and not waste your time our team member of ours cannot waste your time so when you're ready to go you know exactly what you're you're comfortable spending you have all the advice needed you've cleaned up some credit issues so it, it's really great to work with with your team and, and having our buyers uh, ready and feeling comfortable and confident when they find the right property. Yeah. I want them to, I always say you emotionally connect with a property and you back it up. You buy your, a house with your heart and you back it up with your head. So if I already get you, you know, your mindset and, 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 and guide you through the process of having Joe work with you on your finances and knowing exactly what you should be doing and comfortable spending, emotionally connect to that property, love it, want to buy it, you know, get that heart into it because we're going to back it up with the head where, where Joe's going to help you with still pulling the numbers on that house and getting you, um, you know, all your questions answered. So I really, there's, really there's like other, that. other things too, as far as the pre-approval too, you could, you know, some, I could pre-approve someone and they're pre-approved for the house that they love, but there's other areas that I can coach them just to get better terms. You know, there could be a credit card that they could pay down and say, all right, I'm going to get my score from 680 to 720. Um, which is just going to improve, you know, the interest rate. It's going to lower their mortgage payment a little bit. So there's other, even if they are ready and they do qualify for the house of their dreams, there's other ways of improving and coaching someone through the pre-approval process to help them in the long run. And I think that's great because you're not getting that with, with every lender out there. And I think the time and effort and being early in the process, some people want to turn and burn. They don't want to show you properties or, and lenders don't want to, and take the time to really guide you. They just want you, if you're, you know, 100% AP for approval. There, you know, there. That, that's what a lot of lenders I see in the business that uh, kind of want to just get you through the process, and you know, that's it. They don't really want to help you. They kind of see you as a number and not a, not, not a real person. So I, I like that about working with you and Supreme, and our clients do as well. And I, I certainly appreciate it. You, you've saved so many of our deals where people, you know, maybe went with another lender first, and in the process. Maybe it was our client or maybe it wasn't our client and the deal went south and you immediately came in. I, I 
call Joe sometimes, it's funny, I'm a baseball fan, Mariano Rivera of, of mortgages, it's the, you know, the closer, uh, New York Yankees, uh, you know, prize closer, where sometimes you have to get somebody in there to close the deal, and we've had some deals in the last where you close in 10 days or less, uh, fix somebody's financing for them, and, you know, was able to get them a, a much better loan uh, in the process of, of working with you, and, and also got the support and, you know, calm them down, you know, it's, it's an emotional purchase in real estate right now, so it's important that you're, you know, that you go through the process and have a, a real guidance, uh, and I think you have that experience that's been helpful for us, you know, you're also, an, you know, been an appraiser, which I find is a, is a tremendous value, if I'm going on a listing point, I'm not sure about the property, it might be a unique property, you know, in Parkland or surrounding areas, or just we have to you know, get an appraisal that uh, that another buyer's um, lender went with and it doesn't come through and you help me challenge the appraisal. So just the, the knowledge of helping us, if it's you who are working with our client or it's another client with another lender, you're still helping us. And I, and I like that. It's just, you know, we're, you're earning our trust in our business, you know, five plus years ago. And I want our clients to know that's the kind of lender that I'm giving you that contact information on. He's going to be there. He's going to help close you. He's going to be there through the process. And he has this amazing team behind him uh, to really get the loan uh, guided through the process to help you. Um, so the other question I, I find a lot of that we're getting, uh, you know, people are asking us, what is the difference between a pre-approval letter uh, that you mentioned versus a pre-qualification letter? A pre-qualification letter is just really just a, ca a casual conversation. It's just me asking you questions, of how, you know, what's your credit score, what kind of debts do you have, what's your income, um, you know, especially with self-employed people because with tax returns on self-employed, you know, you have your gross income, but then you have the net income. And a lot of people think, well, I made a million, my company made a million bucks last year, but the bottom line on the tax return could be 100000 and sometimes in that casual conversation, you and you're self-employed, you say, well, how much money did you make last year? Well, we made a million dollars. So I'm doing a, a, a pre-qualification based on those numbers. Um, and it's just that. There's, there's nothing I can really do to coach. I don't pull credit, so I can't coach them on if there's anything they need to do, pay down, pay off, get credit scores up. It's hard to coach on the income because I'm just going off figures that they've given me. Um, so it's pretty generic. And uh, I, you know, it's, I really do encourage them, as I said with the pre-approval process, it's never too soon to know what your options are and it doesn't cost you anything. Absolutely, and you know, I find in our business when we have a listing and a buyer, maybe they're not working with us, they, the agent for the buyer submits a pre-qualification letter, I immediately see it as a red flag. You know, they're, they're ready to go, they find the house that they wanna buy, it's our listing, and we have a, a duty to our sellers to, to really make sure that buyer is approved. I call the lender, and, as you said, they had that casual conversation. Well, the guy hasn't given me any of these tax returns. The wife has another job. I don't know really what she does. They haven't provided any you know, documented income or anything. And I'm like, wow, so they're really not approved. Right. So we're gonna go under contract and my seller's gonna start packing and making plans to, to move out. So it's imperative to get pre-approved for the mortgage. So when somebody says they're pre-qualified, or should I just get pre-qualified? You know, it's, it's never true, you don't have to pay anything, you're getting that great advice, there's things that, you know, I love using the word coach, it's gonna, you know, mortgage coach is gonna be able to help you with to get your credit, you know, it, it's best to be prepared, because when you see the right property in the market, it might be too late if you have a pre-qualification letter you instead of a pre You gotta act fast, know what, and I, and I never wanna push a client, so when I find that they're only pre-qualified, they're not really ready, you know, it's not, it's not serious, and, and they might not be knowing that, because I think a lot of people in our business get those two words confused, and mm -hmm. there's a big difference, um, you know, that could be the difference in getting the house or losing the house, and, you know, I, I never want to have a deal that falls apart based on misinformation, so be informed, be engaged, you know, be prepared, you know, everybody wants to get out and look at houses and get on all those sites and, you know, see homes, it's, it's great, it's what I love doing. But you know you, you, you got to do step one before step two and three. And as again, it's never too you're, you're even thinking remotely about making a move. And that's when we come into play and can help you and give you this free knowledge and coach you up and, and give you the best advice to move forward. Um, so those are some of the things that, that you know some of the questions that I like. The, the, the last one um, that I think is important, and I'd like you to elaborate on it. You know what is the difference in working with a local lender like yourself? as opposed to, to working with the bank around the corner or a bank where it's got an 800 number. 
that you call. You know, I, I definitely don't want to you know mention any names, but um, you know what I mean. I, I really want to know what the difference is working with you as being a local lender. You know, getting that local contact and being accessible versus you know that on a regular basis to do your banking and the 800 number will say that you call and you, you know you're speaking to an operator type of thing. Yeah. Well, the 800 number is, is challenging, I think, for most, most borrowers. But you know, the advantage with me is, as I mentioned earlier, I, I grew up down here. So I do know the market you know, very well. All, all, pretty much every neighborhood in every city, I was an appraiser. I did appraisals and all that. But I'm local, and I've been doing this 21 years, so I'm accessible. I mean, it's, in this industry, that's, that's it. It's, you know, most people work during the week. And they're out looking at homes, you know, at night, and they're out looking at homes on the weekend. So when I do these pre-approvals, uh, and they need to make an offer, it's usually at night, it's usually on the weekend, and when I'm calculating payments for them, when they're ready to make that offer, that's when we do it. I mean, that's that's the best time. That's the majority of the time. And uh, I think typically at an 800 number, it's hard to get that person. So uh, I mean, it's and and the experience is just huge. And what about the bank around the corner that somebody, and I get people that always say, you know, they've had my banking information for the last, you know, I know the bank manager there and they've had my banking, you know, my, my whatever, you know, my assets for yeah. the last five years. You know, what do you And that's, that's true. You know, a lot of people do have banking relationships and, you know, their money is invested with a lot of banks and self-employed people have their business accounts at these banks. But the mortgage department really doesn't know much about these people. And that's, you know... That's the challenging thing is, you know, the people in the mortgage department, is, they're just another uh, borrower, another person trying to get a loan. Um, and it, it just, it doesn't make them any more accessible or better, uh, you know, that they're guaranteed to get the loan over there just because their money is there. Uh, they still have to follow the same procedures. All loans are sold to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and the procedures are all the same for all lenders. I look at it like when we work with clients, they sometimes come with us with a pre-approval from one of these 800 numbers and you know I always do my due diligence I first try to call and connect with that person and usually it's hard to get that person on the phone I got to go through three people and you know sometimes that person's obviously not available after five o'clock on a business day a business week as well as somebody on the weekends for sure so I tell people like this is your largest financial assets you really want to work with somebody who's I got to go through hoops then I mean, you're buying you know such a, a major you know, investment for yourself yeah, I, I can get Joe on the phone. I can get a great lender on the phone and give you this great advice now. Um, you know, and also I, I, I want to elaborate on the bank around the corner. I mean, you, you know, common sense would, you would think that they have my money there. And I know this person, but as Joe said, they don't touch it. The bank manager is not touching your loan. The, the person that you say hello to every day when you make your deposits or go through that drive through or that bank manager that gives you a call and asks you, you know, any questions that you have, um, you know that that's totally different than the mortgage professional that you're going to be working with and I have a lot of people that we work with that end up working with Joe because they they don't connect with that person you know they're, they're assigned to this person it could be another state another location you, you, you really have to work with somebody who's going to look at your loan as your number one asset so I, I, I say that you, know, you want to go to a great doctor a great lawyer have a great real estate agent you know, this is the money guy. He's, he's controlling what you're spending. I, I want to be informed. I work with you. I ask him questions so I can be a better realtor. I've used him to, to purchase my own property and, and finance it. My family has. We've had dozens and dozens, not hundreds of clients that work with you. And, and I feel that, that this video and this information is very important. If you're, you're a buyer or seller, <coughs> somebody who's looking to, to make a move, refinance, or any realtors that, that, I'm, that we're connected with, you know, really reach out to Joe and Supreme Lending. I, I think you'll be amazed at their process. They're growing. We see them all over South Florida, and, you know, and, and, and obviously they're, they're probably going to be a top 10 lender in the country. So, again, I want to appreciate you coming, right, uh, being our first guest speaker on Ask Michael Monday. I, I appreciate everybody watching us here on Monday evening. Um, I hope everyone finds this informative. We will have another guest speaker in the coming weeks. We will announce it. Um, so if you have any questions, you want to ask Joe anything, uh, Joe, please provide your, your phone number. What's your, your 954-849-3457. And if you want to ask any questions, certainly shoot me a text here, or you can certainly call Joe, uh, very accessible. And I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much and have a good evening with your family. Good night.